Next two lectures we're, go we're gonna devote to the study of the gravitational radiation. To define what means gravitational radiation, we have to specify what means energy flux in the presence of gravity. That is a problem we are going to address in this lecture. Well, to understand what is a problem, uh, let us start with the standard situation of Minkowski spacetime. In Minkowski spacetime, the energy momentum conservation condition is expressed like this, with a short derivative rather than covariant long derivative. And uh, uh, because of this, if we integrate both sides of this equation over a surface sigma, over a surface sigma, and take zero component, for nu equals to zero, we obtain the following equation that uh, integral over dp zero over dt plus uh, integral over sigma over boundary of this sigma d2, well, it's a three-dimensional because it's three-dimensional, d2 sigma i t i zero equals to zero, where p, p mu is the falling four vector, but it's a function of time. It's an integral over, over sigma t mu zero t x d three sigma. So this is three-dimensional Cauchy surface uh, zero is a long time, so we have a Cauchy surface sigma, and we have a normal direction to this Cauchy surface, which is designated by T, or zero component. So uh, this is what we obtain, and P0, as one can see, P0, P0 is nothing but the energy, because it's the integral over the energy density over the uh, three-dimensional hypersurface. And this is a uh, volume element, uh, area element at the boundary of this surface sigma. So this law establishes conservation, actual conservation of this quantity. If there is no flux, energy flux, through the boundary, this is conserved in this region. If there is energy flux going out, energy is reduced. If in, energy is increased. But in case of the gravity, what we have been calling as the energy momentum conservation doesn't have this form. It does have the following form. It has a form like this with the covariant long derivative. And as a result, we have the following situation. So zero is equal to, we just rewrite, ex, uh, write explicitly this covariant derivative. It's T mu t mu nu, we express it in this form, sorry, with one upper and one, one, this is lower index and this upper index, plus gamma mu beta mu t beta nu minus gamma beta nu mu t mu beta, and as a result, this is equivalent one over square root of the modulus of the determinant of the metric, d mu acting on t mu nu, square root of the determinant of the metric, minus one half of d mu g mu alpha t mu alpha. To obtain this expression, we have used explicit form explicit form for gamma mu nu alpha through the metric, its symmetry properties, and also the fact that energy momentum tensor is symmetric, t mu nu, t nu mu, and finally we have used that gamma, this gamma, the trace of gamma, gamma mu nu mu with two indices and some summation of the indices, is one over square root of g, uh, d nu square root of modulus of g. This is a, follows from the definition of the gamma matrices. So, now what we have is that there is no such a conservation. Well, we have something similar to that expression here, but we have additional term. This, this 
conservation law doesn't, we call it, although we call it conservation law, it doesn't express any explicit conservation of some quantity. And it should be expected on general grounds that if we are dealing with a theory containing gravity, the energy momentum tensor of matter, energy momentum tensor of matter, shouldn't be simply conserved because there can be energy transmission from matter to gravity and from gravity to matter. So the question is what is the quantity which specifies what means energy momentum for the gravity? How to find it? And that's the issue we're going to address now. So now we're going to specify what we mean by the energy momentum for the gravity and what is the total energy momentum of gravity plus matter. So uh, let me first write this uh, relation that we have ended with. Uh, so this is a relation like this. T mu nu um, square root of modulus of the determinant of the metric minus one half d mu g mu alpha t mu alpha. And uh, so let us fix the following uh, reference frame. Such a reference frame around point x0, arbitrary point x0, such that in this uh, frame d alpha g mu nu of x0 is equal to zero. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that g mu nu is equal to eta mu nu. It's not equal. Uh, it's constant, but well, it's at this point it's uh, it's derivative of zero, but it doesn't mean that it is equal to this. But it is important that at this point d mu of square root of modulus of g at the point x zero is equal to zero. It's important. As a result from this equation, because this is true, we obtain that at this point, d mu t mu nu of x zero is equal to zero. So in this particular frame, in this particular point, we have this relation. So what, now let us see uh, how this relation changes in an arbitrary reference system. So let us use Einstein equation to express energy momentum tensor through the Riemann, uh, through the Ricci tensor. So uh, from Einstein equations, we have this relation. G mu nu R. So uh, in this frame, in this frame, we have that because derivative of g are equal to zero, we also have that uh, Christoffel symbols, mu nu alpha at x zero are zero. But d beta gamma mu nu alpha at x zero is not equal to zero. As a result, Ricci tensor at this point and in this frame is as follows. It's one half g mu alpha g nu gamma g sigma delta d alpha d delta g sigma gamma plus d sigma d gamma g alpha delta minus d alpha d gamma g sigma delta minus d sigma d del oh, d d del delta g sigma gamma. So this is the form Ricci tensor has in this frame. As a result, as a result, putting this together, putting this together, we obtain from this equation and this equation after straightforward calculation that t mu nu at x zero 
is equal to d alpha one over sixteen pi kappa over modulus of g d beta modulus of determinant again g mu mu g alpha beta minus g mu alpha g nu beta and uh, finally closing this and now now we are gonna define this as follows we are gonna take uh, designate this as follows it's a uh, one over modulus of determinant of the metric of d alpha of some tensor at uh, mu nu alpha and this at the mu nu alpha at uh, mu nu alpha is equal to 1 over 16 pi kappa d beta acting on modulus of g determinant of metric g mu nu g alpha beta minus g mu alpha g nu beta to obtain this we have extracted this m modulus of the determinant from the derivative because recall that in this frame we have this fact and of course in obtaining all these relations we have bear we had in mind the following saying that around the point so g mu nu around the point x0 can be expressed like this. It's g mu nu at x0. First derivative is absent, but there are second derivatives, d alpha, d beta, g mu nu, x0, x minus x0 alpha, x minus x0 beta. So in deriving this relation, in expressing this like this, we kept the leading terms in this expansion. So we have obtained that in the, at the point x0, in the gauge d alpha g mu nu at x0 equals to 0, that t mu nu, first of all, d mu, t mu nu is 0 in this point in this frame or gauge but uh, at the same time t mu nu is equal to uh, at this point is equal to uh, 1 over modulus of determinant of the metric d alpha at uh, mu nu alpha and uh, at the mu nu alpha at the mu nu alpha is the following quantity. It's 16 pi kappa d beta modulus of determinant of the metric g mu nu g alpha beta minus g mu alpha g mu beta and one can see that this tensor has the following symmetry properties that under the exchange of the first two indices it is symmetric but under the exchange of uh, the this index with any the alpha index with any of the mu and alpha mu and nu it is anti-symmetric so if we keep the first one untouched but exchange as the third and the second index, it changes the sign, as it's seen from this property. And now, because in this frame, in this frame, d uh, mu of uh, this is equal to zero, one can immediately see that from this property of this tensor, if we apply to this relation d mu, d mu, immediately we obtain this. So. Now let us see what happens, uh, what happens beyond this gauge. If we 
change the frame. Then, of course, it's not zero. Let us uh, denote, so d alpha at uh, mu nu alpha minus modulus of the determinant t of t mu nu is not any more zero as, as a consequence of this. It's some quantity which we denote like this, t mu nu. Let us find it. Let us find this quantity. This quantity one can find from the following relation that uh, it is the difference, the difference between what follows from here and Einstein equations. Let me see what, hap what happens. It's uh, 1 over 16 pi kappa d alpha d beta acting on modulus of g times g mu nu g alpha beta minus g mu alpha alpha g nu beta minus modulus of g times 8 pi kappa r mu nu minus one half g mu nu r. Well, this is just follows from this. Uh, the, the definition of this is this. The definition of this is this. Well, this follows from here. And this follows from Einstein equations. So in this gauge, uh, they cancel each other. And this is 0. But beyond this gauge, we have, after a tedious but straightforward calculation, we find the following. Well, it will be a long expression. So let me write it, start writing here. So modulus of g times t mu nu is equal to the following quantity. It's 1 over 16 pi kappa. I first write the expression and then explain the notation. G mu nu, comma alpha, G alpha beta, comma beta, minus G mu alpha, comma alpha, G nu beta, comma beta, plus one half G mu nu, G alpha beta, G alpha gamma, comma sigma, G sigma beta, comma gamma, minus G mu gamma, G alpha beta, G nu beta, comma sigma, G alpha sigma comma gamma plus g nu alpha g beta gamma g mu gamma comma sigma g big g beta sigma comma alpha plus small g alpha beta g gamma sigma big G mu alpha comma gamma G nu beta comma sigma plus one eight two G mu alpha G nu beta minus G mu nu G alpha beta times 2 G gamma sigma G delta psi minus G sigma delta G gamma psi times 
g gamma xi alpha g this is comma g sigma delta comma beta closed so this is a tedious relation for the for this quantity where g mu nu, big g mu nu, big g mu nu is by definition is just square root of g times g mu nu. And I remind you that this comma of any quantity is just, well, anyway, g mu nu comma alpha is just d alpha of g mu nu. Well, one can immediately see that in the gauge, in the frame where this is zero, this just vanishes because it contains only derivatives of, of the, the metric. But beyond this gauge, this is not zero. Well, it's a tedious calculation to obtain from here this quantity. So what we have obtained is the following, that d alpha at uh, mu nu alpha minus modulus of g t mu nu is equal to modulus of g t mu nu. And uh, we have obtained a rather complicated relation, uh, expression for this quantity. The reason for introducing this quantity, which is, we, we did that after Landau and Lifshitz, and this quantity is referred to as pseudo uh, tensor, energy momentum tensor for gravity. Why it is called pseudo tensor? Because it is not a tensor quantity under the coordinate transformations because here in this, from this its definition, one can see that uh, this expression contains short derivatives rather than covariant derivatives. And as a result, the transformation law for this quantity is not appropriate for the tensor. But the reason for introducing this pseudo energy momentum tensor was as follows. As the consequence of this relation and the symmetry properties of this guy, under the exchange of uh, index alpha with any of this, that it is anti-symmetric. As a consequence, we have the following conservation law. Uh, T mu nu plus T mu nu equals to zero. So this is a real conservation law with short derivative, and this quantity is conserved. So we can define, define the uh, for momentum as follows. D3 sigma nu modulus of g t mu nu plus t mu nu. And uh, this is a four vector, four vector which is perpendicular to the Cauchy surface sigma. So we integrate, it is perpendicular to Cauchy surface sigma. And modulus of it is equal to the elementary, elementary three volume on this Cauchy surface. Elementary three volume on this Cauchy surface. So in the absence of the gravitational field, this is one, this is zero, and we just go back to the same quantity as in Minkowski space. In the presence of the gravitational field, this is the quantity we have to consider. So in the presence of the gravitational field to have a conservation of some quantity, we have to fix a background and consider, uh, uh, well, this is the issue we're gonna discuss right now.